He said, man, you don't understand, man. We in the Apollo Theater, crowded. And he slapped the living day out of me, broke my cassette in my face. If that was you, what would you do? I said, listen, you're not me and I'm not you. Hey, good day, good day, good day. Thanks for joining me. Just in case you're joining me for the very first time, I am the real Brian Clay Gibbs. And this is my ministry. Crime doesn't pay. Hit the like button, subscribe, share, support. Today what I'm talking about is conflict resolution. How do you utilize conflict resolution when you're in the street? When there's no rules, there's no regulation. But how in the hell can you use that? Here there is a seven step. Okay, number one, bring both parties together. Number two, lay out the ground rules. Number three, find the root cause of the conflict. Number four, actively listen as each side has their say. Number five, establish a desired outcome. Number six, get participant to suggest potential solution. Number seven, agree on a resolution and what must be done to make it happen. So Brian, so we're talking about conflict resolution today. Give me a story, or give me a time, you know, of course you did your thing in the street. Give me a time where you had to actually utilize conflict resolution to resolve an issue or take care of an issue uh, that you had or somebody else may have had. Okay. You know what? Perfect example. It's a guy. Everybody know him. He got a book out called Crack Era. And right now is he got that magazine, a, a street urban magazine called Don Diva. His name is Kevin Child. Anybody know anything about the individual? Guess what? His story is well documented. Okay, what's the situation? that what happened, a cousin of mine, he got into an altercation at the Apollo Theater. So when he was at the Apollo Theater, everybody was there at that particular time that was in the street. From like you say, the likes of Alpo, Kevin Child, AZ, Rich Porter, all those guys that was about it, about it back then. So just so happened, my cousin and this guy, Al B, they got into a misunderstanding in the Apollo Theater and it's crowded. So they're around the area, I guess they drinking, they talking shit or whatever. And I guess Al B, what he did is he say something slick to my cousin in front of people. And basically what happened, my cousin got mad. And my cousin a big cat. What he did was he hauled off and slapped the living daylight out of Al B, breaking his gazelle glass in his face. Sit back and think about it, it's crowded. Security, people come, they broke it up. So only thing right now was, guess what, when the dude or Al B got up, he started talking about, yo, Sammy, you dead, you dead, you dead. That's it. Bingo. Sammy got out of there. Long story short, word happened on the street that they was looking for Sammy, that they was going to kill him. So automatically what he did was he came to Brooklyn, told me the story, told me what was going on, what happened. Yo, listen, man, these cats, they want to kill me. Um, like, I don't really know what to do. And right now, he was down with the group. And the group that he was down with, most of the guys was already incarcerated at the time, fighting the fat beat. So automatically, that's family. We got into the car. We went up town. So we left Brooklyn, went up town, and we got up there on 125th Street. And Kevin Chow, he had a sneaker store. Okay? So when we went in there, it's only me and my cousin, but I got two of my guys for the M&M crew. So they with me. So they got on army fatigue, and right now when we went in the store, they got their Uzi out. You know what I'm saying? Right there, strapped around their neck, and they got their hand on the trigger ready to go. So when we got into it, you had the workers inside the store. They was all nervous. Yo, what are y'all doing? What are you doing? Hold up, wait. We're a customer. Let me get this. Let me buy this. Let me buy this. Let me buy this. What I'm looking for is this. We need some information. So my cousin told him he wanted to know where Kevin Child was. Kevin wasn't there. So basically right now, he paged Kevin. Kevin called back and basically right now he rendered the address of this bar in the Bronx that Al B was at, that Al B and his brother owned. So the Magni, we left there. We got into the car. We got up to the Bronx. As we got up to the Bronx, we get out the car. My cousin told me, yo, here he go, here he go there. So right now as I got the car, I went to talk to the guy, Al B. I said, yo, man, listen, man, let's talk. Nah, nah, man, I heard y'all guys coming up here. Y'all looking to kill me. I said, nah, brother, it's not about that. Let me and you talk. So I let him know. I opened up, show him. I didn't have no guns on me. Only day I had my vest and my jewelry. So me and him went into the bar. When we went into the bar, you know, we sat, we talked. I said, listen, man, what is it going to take for you to squash the beef with my cousin? I said, if you sit back and you think about it, whatever, man. He said, man, you don't understand, man. We're in the Apollo Theater, crowded. 
and he slapped the living day out of me, broke my cassette in my face. If that was you, what would you do? I said, listen, you're not me and I'm not you. But hopefully right now was, guess what? If it would have happened to me, I would have had enough common sense to realize that, guess what? I couldn't do nothing. I couldn't kill this man in front of a crowd of people because there's too many witnesses. I said, listen, you, how much your gazelle cost? He told me $500. I went in my pocket, I gave him five $100 bill. Woo. I said, listen, man, I need you to squash the beef for my cousin. I said, because once again, if you shoot him and kill him, he's dead. You won't get 25 to life. It's no winner in that. So to me, if you squash this beef, do your homework. Ask people who Brian Glaze gives. If you need heroin, you need coke, guess what? I can get that for you at a decent price. If you need somebody hit, I'm in your pocket now. I owe you if you squash the beef. If you need anybody hit except for my cousin, guess what? I'll take care of that for you free of charge. So once again, like I said right now, as we sitting, talking, and I'm trying to, you know, get him to understand, listen, man, as man, right now in that community, in that world, I got too much of blood on my hand. So what the sense right now, I could have just go ahead and knock him off, murder him and be about it. But no, I didn't want to do that. So what I did was I made that man an offer that he couldn't refuse. And like I say, if he squashed that beef, guess what? If he got a problem in the future that he needs somebody taking care, I do it for him, for him to squash that beef for my cousin. So what, it, what happened was my cousin came in the bar, they sat down, we talked about it, and you know what? He squashed the beef. He let it go. But see, folks, what people don't understand is this. Yes, it was easy for me just to blast him and get out the way, but I didn't want to do that. Because once again, like I said right now, was, to me it wasn't worth it, especially if I knew I could resolve it. So long story short right now was him and my cousin, they embraced, they shook hands, and they squashed the damn beef.